Hey everybody, welcome back to Run and Gun. I'm JT and in this video, I wanna show you guys how to make double exposures like this and like this right in Photoshop. And all you need are two photos. Let's get right into it. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, I am here in Photoshop and this is one of the double exposures that I made just using two images. And one of the images is of a busy city street in New York City, last time I was there. And the other image here is of Sean Morgan, and he is the lead singer of Seether that I photographed a couple years ago. So this is a pretty simple process. Let's delete this top layer. I'll talk about this image a little bit. I took this photo right before sunset, and when I exposed for Sean's face, it completely blew out the sky. So you can see it's nice and bright and white here in the background. And I have some nice dark tones when I added some contrast to this image, and it's gonna work great for a double exposure. And when I'm looking for images, I really like to find an image where the face is properly exposed and the background is a little bit blown out. And this is pretty easy to do whether you're taking a portrait in a studio or you're photographing your subject against a very bright background. And what this will do for your double exposure, your secondary image will show up very well in these dark and mid-tone areas and it won't show up at all in these overexposed areas just like if you were shooting a double exposure on a film camera. So let's go through some of these images I have here. Here's a busy city street that I took. Here's another city street that I took in NYC. And here's another city street. So let's try this one actually. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna drag it over and bring that image onto this image. We'll get it lined up right here. And for my blend mode of my top image, I'm going to select screen. And you'll see this is pretty darn close to what I'm looking for. I actually like this better than the other image that I was using before with this New York City street. It looks kind of cool. And as I mentioned earlier, you can see the overexposed images of the portrait aren't allowing us to see any of this New York City background while the midtones and the shadows, that image is coming through nice and clear. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up this image exactly where I want it so I can best see Sean's face and also see some of the details of the city because I think that's pretty important too. I love seeing this car right here in his beard. I can see this transit bus right there in the microphone, some of the buildings in the hair. And when I hit enter to save the transform, those handles will disappear. And this is what our double exposure looks like. Again, I really like doing that overexposed background and that really helps you focus on your subject's face. And it looks really nice here in the midtones. And for my background image, if I hide my portrait here, you can see I did a slightly darker image of a crosswalk in New York City. And this whole process is a matter of experimentation and playing around with different images and seeing how different tones interact with each other when you use the screen blend mode. So let's take a look at one of our other images. I took this portrait in New York City as well, and you can see I used a similar New York City crosswalk background between these buildings, and they just happen to line up really well. So let's turn off these top layers, and you can see I have a pretty nice portrait. I went in here, I did a little bit of retouching, you can see there, so we'll zoom out to our portrait. I turn the portrait black and white by using a black and white adjustment layer, which you can go to layer, new adjustment layer, and hit that black and white, and it will make a new filter here to turn your image black and white. You can adjust the hues if you want your red hues a little bit darker, like the skin tones, you can turn them towards the blacks right here, or if you want your red tones a little bit lighter like that, that looks pretty unnatural. I usually like to hit auto and see what it does. And then I can go in here and tweak some of the luminance values of my hues. So we can close that little tab out. I also added a contrast layer just to bump up the highlights a little bit more and turn down the shadows, just a hint. And then I selected this layer. Again, I used the screen blend mode. And you can see these two images just happen to line up extremely well against these dark parts of the building and the bright portions of her face. They just contrast really well. And I think this image looks pretty darn awesome. I'm actually gonna take this curves layer and I'm gonna drag it up above the buildings as well. 
oh, maybe I don't like that so much. It's actually making her face disappear a little bit. So I'll keep that down there. And this is our full final image. And it just took me a couple seconds to make. I really like if you see the details in her black dress, make this crosswalk and all these individuals pop out. You can see the taxis down here. You can see the CVS pharmacy, the turn lanes, all these neat little details. And as you scroll up, everything kind of points towards her face with these cranes and the tops of these buildings over here. And I just think this looks like a really awesome image. So you can see here, this is our before image. This is our secondary image that we added on top. And here is our final double exposure. And I just really like the way this one turned out. It just has this interesting kind of relaxed vibe of the portrait and then this busy vibe mixed together, this contrast that they just lined up really well. And it's a matter of pre-planning and kind of a matter of luck when you start making these double exposures. You could do this effect in camera with most digital DSLR and mirrorless cameras today. And of course, you can also do it with film by just double exposing a single roll of film. And I'll do tutorials in the future for both of those processes pretty soon. But that's about all for this video. Thank you guys for joining me. If you learned something, definitely hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe for more of my tutorials in the future. And until next weekend, get out and go shoot.